September 18th, St. Joseph Cupertino. St. Joseph Cupertino was an Italian mystic whose life is a wonderful combination of a lack of natural capacity and an extraordinary supernatural efficiency. He lacked every natural gift. He was incapable of passing a test, maintaining a conversation, taking care of a house, or even touching a dish without breaking it. He was born on June 17th in the year 1603 into a family of poor artisans. Because of his father's debts, he was born in a shed behind the house because the house was being foreclosed upon. He was sickly and often at death's door during his childhood, and at age seven he developed a gangrenous ulcer, which was later cured by a religious man. He was always despised by his companions who called him a fool. Even his mother wearied of him and repudiated him for his lack of value. Later, when he entered the religious life, he faced worse difficulties. The Capuchins received him as a lay brother, but his ineptitude and abstraction made him unbearable for the other religious. Often he was taken in ecstasy, and, oblivious of what he was doing, he would drop the food or break the dishes in trays. As a penance, bits of broken plates were fastened to his habits as a humiliation and a reminder not to do the same again. But he could not change. He could not even be trusted with serving the bread because he would forget the difference between the white and the brown loaves. Finally, considering that he was good for nothing, the religious took his habit and expelled him from the monastery. Later, he declared that having the habit taken from him was the greatest suffering of his life and that it was as if his skin had been torn from his body. When he left the monastery, he had lost part of his lay clothes. He was without a hat, boots, or stockings, and his coat was moth-eaten and worn. He presented such a sorry sight that when he passed a stable down the lane, dogs rushed out on him and tore his apparel to even worse tatters. He escaped and continued along the road, but soon came upon some shepherds who thought he was a miscreant and were about to give him a beating when one of their number had pity upon him and persuaded them to let him go free. From there he went to the house of his uncle, who, ashamed of him, scolded him and sent him back into the streets with nothing. Reaching his native town, he came to the house of his parents, where his own mother berated him. Finally, the superior of the monastery of Grotella discerned his sanctity and decided to take him in as a servant. He was appointed to the stable and made keeper of the monastery's donkey. It was there that the sanctity of St. Joseph Cupertino began to be recognized. He was always humble, full of good cheer, and willing to serve. The superior decided to admit him to the monastery with hopes that he might learn enough to be ordained, but the effort seemed to be hopeless. Joseph could not comment on any passage of scriptures except one, Blessed be the womb that bore thee. When the time came for his examination for him to be ordained a deacon, the bishop opened the gospels at random, and his eyes fell on that one text Joseph knew well. Joseph was able to expound on it with success. A year later came the test for the priesthood. All postulants except Joseph were very well prepared. The bishop called on a number of the candidates who responded superbly. Supposing that all were of the same intellectual level, the bishop approved all of them without questioning the rest. Joseph was among the candidates who were asked nothing. Therefore, on March 4th in the year 1628, Joseph became a priest at 25 years of age. During this period of his life, the spiritual consolations he had enjoyed since his childhood seemed to abandon him. He wrote that he complained a lot to God about God. I had left everything for him, and he, instead of consoling me, delivered me to mortal anguish. He continued, One day, when I was weeping and wailing in my cell, a religious knocked on my door. I did not answer, but he entered my room and said, Friar Joseph, how are you? I am here to serve you, I answered. I thought you did not have a habit, he continued. Why, yes, I have one, but it's falling apart. Then the unknown religious gave me a new habit, and when I put it on, all my despair disappeared immediately. No one ever knew who that religious was. From this time on, the life of St. Joseph Cupertino changed. He became famous for his ecstasies, miracles, and for the gift of levitation. He experienced this so often he became known as the Flying Friar. 
During the seventeen years he remained at Grotella, over seventy occasions are recorded of his levitation, the most marvelous being when the friars were building a calvary. The middle cross of the group was thirty-six feet high and correspondingly heavy, to find the efforts of ten men to lift it st joseph is said to have flown seventy yards from the door of the house to the cross picked it up in his arms as if it were straw and deposited it in place he began to attract so many pilgrims to the monastery that his superiors had to transfer him from one monastery to another to avoid all the commotion finally he arrived in osimo in the year sixteen fifty seven where he continued to experience supernatural manifestations of god's favor until he died on september eighteenth in the year sixteen sixty three at age sixty he was beatified by pope benedict the fourteenth in the year seventeen fifty three and canonized by pope clement the thirteenth in the year seventeen sixty seven he is the patron saint of aviators flying studying and those suffering from mental handicaps